Good afternoon. So today we're going to solve another fun problem. This problem is called generate parentheses. Now, this problem I actually got asked once while I was interviewing with one of the top hedge funds. So I thought it was pretty good to, uh, you know, go through it this time um, and uh, solve it with you guys. So in Leetcode, this is considered to be a medium difficulty. Um, so let's read the question and see where we can get. Uh, okay, given n pairs of parentheses, write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. So let's note on this one keyword, well-formed. So what is a well-formed parentheses? It means something that is completely, it has an open bracket and a closed bracket, completing it as one. So that's, cause, call, that's pretty much a well-formed parentheses. Something like this, nah, it's not going to work. Okay, for example, given n equals 3, the solution set is this. So you see how uh, for every 1, 2, 3 open bracket, you're going to have 3 closed bracket following. Same case here. Uh, you have things that are open, open, and then you close off, and then you open again, you close off, close off. So a well-formed set is pretty much something that ensures you always start off with a left or a, I'll call this an open parentheses, and you have to ensure that it will close with like a, you know, all right parentheses so let's when we look at this question um, we could almost ask ourselves it it sounds pretty much because we have some keywords I'll find generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses when they ask questions about getting um, all combinations you should start thinking about okay maybe what, what, can, what kind of tool sets do we have that we can start generating all possibilities and then after with the, once we generate all those possibilities, only select those possibilities uh, that are valid and push it into our solutions array. Think about it. It sounds pretty much like recursion, doesn't it? I think we're gonna try. Let's let's try solving this with recursion um, and and see how it goes. So, like I said, in all of these things, I like converting it into ES6 format. Great. All right. So I'm going to go and establish my solution array first, just because I like it. Boom. And because I'm going to do it this, this time a little bit differently, I'm not going to establish my helper function outside. I'm going to try and do it within scope so I have access to the solutions. Um, so I'm going to write a function in here to help uh, generate all the possible combinations. So I'm going to call it const uh, generate combo, right, will equal to um, something in here something in here and we will have our our uh, exit conditions 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 and then we have to make sure we invoke it so generate combo combo and you pass in your stuff in here and ensure that we actually return our solution so this is just getting the basic structure of our, our program out. We just meant to make sure that in a recursive um, manner, we establish uh, an exit condition and ensure that we make sure we actually, you know, call it. So what things you want to, would you want to pass into, into this particular element? Think about it. I think I'm going to like to pass in the left parentheses, p count and the right p count and i'm going to pass in also something that is going to you know as we iterate through these combinations we're pretty much going to generate a partial partial string right or a partial combination of it so let's continue all righty okay so one of the things we want to check um, before we go through this recursive calls to basically get rid of all the invalid ones. So invalid as we go into the recursive tree. So one of the things you want to do is pretty much say, okay, well, if my left P count is going to be greater than my right P count, then just exit. So in this case, it's like if you generate a case like this, boom, it's going to exit and it won't return anything great 
So what's the next thing we need to check? Well, if the left count and the right count total becomes zero, then we're pretty confident that we've used up pretty much all of our uh, parentheses. So remember, we're given the number of complete pairs, right? So n is going to be like saying that we have three of these open guys and three of these closed elements, right? So my goal here is to say that, okay, if my three count is going to become zero or my and my right count is going to come from zero, then pretty much we have a full set. We're good. So let's do that. If my, I'm going to call left P count, I'm going to use a, this notation is going to be kind of fun. And my right P count is uh, equal to zero. Then I pretty much have generated my partial solution over here is actually going to be a, the, the, the one of the complete sets, one of the sets that are available here. So I'm going to actually go and push this one in solution, solution dot push in the partial. All right. So let's recap on what this actually does. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be passing in um, effectively the, uh, <clears throat> the n into both these elements and then an initial value of a string. So what am I doing here? So I know that I'm going to have left, um, since, there, since we have like three, in this case, three complete parentheses, I know my left parenthesis count is going to be three. My right is also going to be three. And I'm going, to parse, I'm going to try to build up these strings by passing in an empty string. So if my left count is ever going to be greater than my right count, so for example, like this, um, I know for a fact that if I generate any combo, I will always have something that with an open bracket. So that's not valid. That won't be a valid partial string. So I'm going to eliminate that and kill it. And we also know that if all these are gone, boom, boom, I can push, then I've pretty much generated a actual valid set. So I could actually push that particular um, partial string into my solution. So what are the things that we actually need to check um, in here is um, checking. Now we have to start building these things. So one of the things is making sure that we have a valid uh, parentheses. So about left p count should be greater than zero. Uh, and then I'm going to generate combo while I go left p count minus one. I'm going to basically say, okay, cool. I'm going to take one of those left p counts. Right p count remains the same. And I'm going to pick partial plus this parentheses version. All right, cool. And now I got to check the other side of things. Copy this because I'm lazy. Boom. This is going to be my right p count is going to be greater than zero. And then I'm going to basically pass in the right p count minus one. And now I'm going to build the right side of things. Cool. So what we're actually doing, let's let's kind of recap what we actually did here. So what we're doing is like we're given a number three, which indicates that okay, there's gonna be three, there's gonna be three open parentheses and three closed parentheses, like this, that's available to us. Go along to every parentheses, we're essentially generate all possible combinations and picking out the ones um, that actually fall, fall into this condition of being a complete uh, parentheses set. So for example, um, right here, uh, if I pass in the, in our first call, we're gonna pass in three, three, and then initial string. So I'm gonna represent it as N, uh, it'll be like left, I'm gonna just describe it here, left P count will be equal to three, uh, my right p count will be three. Right here, right p count will be three, and my partial string right now I'm building is going to be uh, partial will equal to an empty string. So on my first call of this function, I'm going to check is my left p count greater than my right? Well, three, three, no. Is are they equal to zero? No. So what am I going to do? Is my left greater than zero? 
yes. So I'm actually gonna pass in, uh, I'm gonna generate calling myself again, but I'm gonna pass in the number two in here instead. Uh, and my right P count remains this three, and my partial string at this time is gonna not gonna be this blank one anymore. It's actually gonna start out with, I'm gonna call it partial, I'm gonna call square root one to be the, to indicate this is part of the first call stack. It's gonna open up with this, with an open bracket, right? So, and then in this case also, in the blank scenario, we're also gonna have a case where uh, we're gonna call in here, uh, we'll call and open it with a open parentheses, right? So let's let's check on, I know, let's pause a sec. I know this will be a valid entry and then pretty much this will continually call the same thing. It's gonna have another set of either gonna be an open one and a one that has like on a second call stack, it's gonna be open one. And then the second one will be like this option, which is completely valid and then so on and so forth. It'll build those comp components. But let's let's look at what happened in the in the first call stack first. So on the first one, we had one that generate the open parentheses and a closed parentheses. If we follow the one along with the closed parentheses, if this is going to be passed in here, you'll notice that, you know, one of these conditions will pretty much kill this option. So it won't even return anything. So it won't even be part of my solution. So you can see that by adding this exit condition, um, it allows us to pretty much filter uh, any cases where it's an incomplete um, parentheses combination. So pretty much, let's see if this is actually solving the problem. Let's cross our fingers and then passing the right numbers and then, and then, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's check it out. Run. Oh no, error. Oh, ha, foolish me, run. Cool, I generate that. Let's see if it actually works. Submit. Cool, I got it. Well, hopefully this was a detailed explanation of this, uh, so it helps you a little bit more. Um, I know it's kind of hard to visually or actually explain it verbally on how, uh, you know, uh, recursion works, but just think of this in one more note, just think of this as like a big tree, right? For every node you pass in, you're gonna, you're gonna open up a new call stack that opens like more branches. And from those two, you have like two conditions, you open the same branch, same branch, same branch, until the point where you have your exit conditions. And in our case, our two exit conditions are either your left parentheses is greater than your right parentheses, which makes, if you ever generate any more combos, to be invalid, or um, if both your parentheses counts are equal to zero, meaning that, oh cool, the, the string that you've generated would be a valid one. Well, hopefully this helps you. See you until next one. Bye.